Here's four mistakes that can actually ruin your presentations in PowerPoint and also some tips of how you can resolve the issues. Let's start with number one, which is overloading your slides. And for that, I would like to start with the quote from Leonardo da Vinci, which is simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. So let's keep that as a guideline for the first one. Let's look at a slide which we commonly see in PowerPoint, which is the text heavy slides. At the top, we can see a title, which is difficult to understand at first glance. And that is a really important point that we keep the titles simple, followed by the bullet points, which is difficult to see what the focus point is of that bullet point because there's so much text around it, especially if we combine it six times and really overload the slide. So what I would do in this case is I would remove the title and keep it shorter. For example, six reasons to avoid overloading slides which is a lot lighter to digest. And we also highlight the word avoid overloading, which is a keyword in yellow, so it pops out extra. Then we combine it with the bullet points, which we have converted into actual bullet points and standalone parts. We have the nice circle with an icon, a subtitle, which is the key message of that point that we want to emphasize, and then the text below to give some extra clarification. And then we combine this six times. So we have a nice overview of the six reasons which makes it a lot more digestible for the audience to see. Now let's jump into the actual slide. And here we can see the title. Yeah, that's just a rephrasing of the title in a more simple way, where we use a white title and then we select a few words and we just give them a different font color to make them stand out more. For that, we use yellow. So we have a consistent theme in the presentation. The bullet points are quite simple. We've grouped them together. So if we ungroup this, you can see there's multiple elements. There's a circle in the background. There's an icon, which we have used from the icon library in PowerPoint here, the standard stock images and icon library. And then we have a nice text box with all capital letters in yellow to really focus on that element, that most important keyword of the bullet point. And then below we have the text in a reduced format so we keep it short, crisp and simple. Looking at the first example, the first bullet point, it was overloaded slides can overwhelm the audience. That is the first sentence here. We already know we're talking about overloaded slides so we don't have to repeat that. We've put it in the title itself. So the key thing here is overwhelming the audience. So that is why I put this as the subtitle. And then secondly, we have the rest of the text, the reason behind it, making it difficult for them to focus or remember the key points. And that I've shortened to too much content distracts and hinders memory. Now you can do this manually and look for the key messages that you want. Or if you want a little bit more of an easy route, you can copy the text and put it into, for example, ChatGPT or Copilot that is coming in the future. And you can ask it to shorten the message and give you a key title. Let's try this for each of the bullet points. Look for a keyword as a subtitle and reduce the text to seven to eight words maximum. And then you paste the text and then let's see what comes out if we send it. So now it generates for us the shortened version. Of course, I would highly advise you to do it yourself so you know the content. But if you want some assistance by AI, this could be really helpful. So you have the subtitles and then you have a shortened version of your text. So this way we don't overload the audience with our content and we make it a lot more digestible. As an extra bonus tip, I would go a little bit further and even animate this slide so you are in full control as the presenter. And for that, I would say add the slide title to the page and make that visible. And then only on each click, you will release one of the bullet points as you're talking about it. And as soon as you're done talking about the bullet point, you can add the next one and the next one and the next one. So you're really as a presenter in control of whatever content pops up onto your slide and you can guide that attention of the audience. This brings us to mistake number two to avoid, which is low quality images. And for that, I would like to use the quote, quality is never an accident. It is always the result of intelligent effort by John Ruskin. And it's true, if you see a nicely designed slide, it is always because there has been put effort into it. And that really shines through in presentations. And here we have a slide with an image that has very poor quality, often pixelated images, just slapped on or not really integrated into the slide. And on the left, we have some text that is just adding the information that we're talking about. 
it's a slide it gives the information but it doesn't do that extra thing and it's not really memorable at all so what i would do here is i would add a nice eye catcher of an image on the slide combined with a nice title and then the content evenly split and nicely aligned so everything is easily digestible on the slide of course you need to have these images available and for that you can use multiple tools the first one is of course if you go into powerpoint go to insert icons you can go to the images tab and here you can type in for example paris and this will give you some nice images of things that you're looking for if you can't find the image here there's also another alternative and that is on websites such as unsplash and these websites consist of nice high quality images that you can use for your designs so if we go to the search bar on top and we type in paris we can see a lot of nice images of paris where you can find something that really matches your style this was the image that i've used and you can just download it here for free in whichever size that you want it's not only available for the standard images but if you say for example architecture you can find a lot of nice architecture images available here so depending on the topic that you're talking about this is a library where you find a lot of good quality images for your slides that brings us to mistake number three which is having no visual hierarchy in your slides and for that i have a quote from steve jobs which says design is not just what it looks like and feels like design is how it works and even that we can apply to powerpoint presentations let's look at an example because there's a fixed way that we read slides so if i put content on you'll firstly read the large word then you'll read the subtitle in yellow next you read the paragraph below the subtitle or any other content displayed and then eventually you'll read the footnotes of the slide so there's a hierarchy in an order in which you can read things depending on how you put them on the slide another example is here you'll see the image first and then you'll glance over to the title the subtitle the paragraph and eventually the footnotes so you're really in control with the way you put the content on the slide and there's a bit of a science behind it so let's compare the first two examples that we've made here we see the slide on the left is the original one and on the b one is the alternative that we have made on the left side we see there's a very little visual hierarchy the title is the one that jumps out first and then you continue down the bullet points without really skipping to any particular detail and it's very hard to control the pace and on the right side it's a different story let's zoom in on that slide for a second because on this page the first thing you will see is the avoid overloading and the title six reasons to avoid overloading slides with that avoid overloading as the key message next you'll see the different bullet points with their respective titles so you can scan through that and if you're interested in a particular part you can read that subpart for more information so the order is really the title then the bullet points and then the shorter or the more in detailed information of the slide and that really puts you in control as a presenter of your slides which makes it easy if this is a standalone document people can scan the title they can scan the subtitles and if they already know okay it's going to overwhelm the audience reduces comprehension but why does it lower engagement then people can skip directly to this part overloading can bore or overwhelm reducing the audience interest so the audience can really jump to whichever point is most relevant to them and get the most out of your presentation now moving to the next example which is the paris example we can see on the left the visual hierarchy isn't too interesting we look at the image on the right and then we look at the bundle of text that we have on the left and on the right side it's a bit of a different story we look first at the image on the right side of the slide then we jump to the title and then the bullet points where you first scan through probably through the headlines and then you go to the more detailed information so it's a very nice way to transfer information to your audience so it's important to be aware of the visual hierarchy that you can influence a lot of how people read your slides and that brings us to number four which is inconsistency and a nice quote by charles eames is the details are not the details they make the design and what I often see in presentations is that people make a combination of slides. So on the left, we can see this is just a compilation of different slides that they had with very few or very little visual consistency. On the right, we can see an example of a template that is being used with a lot of visual consistency in between the slides. 
let's look at that in a bit more detail. Looking at the inconsistent slides first, what we often see here is we have a title, but then it's followed by a different slide with different fonts, different placement of the images. One has a shadow, the other one doesn't. On the next font, we use all caps, then we use smaller letters, different style of images, or totally different backgrounds with shadows and shades on the images. Very often because you have copied that slide from a previous presentation where it did fit, but if you then compile them together, they no longer fit at all. So this is unfortunately an example which you come across a lot in daily life where people just throw some images, charts, visuals together with not a lot of consistency along and among your slides. A different way of tackling this is using one consistent font and color palette in your entire presentation and also the way you display your images. This is an example of a black and yellow template that I've made where you can see the images are black and white or gray tints and then we have the accent color of the yellow combined with the dark template in general. Everything that is a title is in the same caps, the same font, use the same font type, the alignment is all the same across the slides. And that gives a cool, consistent look and feel of your presentation, which makes it very professional to look at. If we look at the overview of the template here, we can see some examples of what a visual consistent look and feel can look like in your presentation. And this will really help with the audience retention and the audience engagement throughout your presentation. It makes it look a lot more professional than just slapping together some slides from existing presentations. If you're interested in learning how to make this overall consistent presentation, please watch the video on the screen right now.